In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make my bow bag pattern. I designed this pattern back in 2007 and I think it's time that it made a comeback. This pattern comes in two sizes and it uses a product called Rigoline or Rigoline. I'm not sure of the pronunciation, boning. But anyway, this product is what holds strapless dresses up and gives corsets their shape. If you're interested, this pattern is available as a PDF purchase on our website. But if not, keep watching because there's always so much to learn in our videos. The requirements list and cutting out instructions are in the PDF pattern. I've already cut out, so let's get started. So the first step after cutting out is to iron the medium weight iron-on pelon onto the wrong side of our two main bag pieces and our two oval pieces. Seems a bit strange with the two oval pieces, but you'll see why as we go on in the video. Now medium weight iron-on pelon is also known as fusible fleece. It has glue dots on one side and those glue dots are going to get ironed against the wrong side of the fabric. I'm going to use my applique mat, but you can also use parchment paper and that's just going to protect your fabric and the iron while you're fusing them together. So make sure that the pieces are fused really well onto the iron on pelon or fusible fleece and now set these pieces aside for later. Thread up with an all-purpose polyester thread to match your fabric and a size 80 jeans needle. Now the seam allowance for constructing the bag is one centimetre and for all the other little pieces it's a quarter of an inch so you can either use a quarter inch foot but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move my needle position over to the right so that the distance from the needle to the edge of the foot is a quarter of an inch. And I always use a stitch length of three when I'm bag making. To make the straps, you can either have a nice smooth handle like this or you can have a gathered handle. Both of them are just a tube of fabric where we've threaded the wriggling boning through. So what do you want, Laura? Gathered or smooth? Definitely gathered today. Okay, let's do it. So take the fabric strip for the handle and fold it in half lengthwise with the right sides facing and sew down the raw edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Turn the fabric tube through to the right side using either a loop turner, a safety pin or the ribbon trick that I showed in the baguette bag tutorial. Now position the seam in the centre back of the strap or handle and press. Cut two pieces of rigoline to the size of your handle and then just thread the rigoline through the fabric tube. If you're making the smooth strap, just extend the fabric half an inch past the end of the rigoline. So it'll be half inch longer on both ends. And then you can also come back and just give that another press while the rigoline is actually inside the fabric tube. If you're making the gathered strap, once again, just make that fabric extend half inch past the end, stitch across it with the machine, and then keep threading the fabric on. To protect the fabric from the sharp ends of the rigoline, fold the half inch of the fabric over, and then just stitch an eighth of an inch away from the end of the rigoline, and then trim away the excess fabric. So go ahead and make two straps in either the gathered style or the smooth style. To make the loop, take the small bias cut strip and fold it in half lengthwise with the right sides facing and sew along the raw edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then turn the loop through to the right side. Press the seam to one side and then fold the strip into a loop and stitch across the raw end sewing a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Fold each of the small squares in half with the right sides facing and sew down the long raw edge with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You can chain piece these to speed up the process. Then position the seam in the centre back with the seam open and then sew across one short end on each piece. Once again, chain piecing. Clip away the corners and then turn the pieces through to the right side using the blunt end of a pencil and then poke the corners out using a point turner. So press all of the bow loops and then set them aside until later. Mm -hmm. 
Take the exterior front and back bag pieces that have the pellon or the fusible fleece ironed onto them and then take the pattern piece. Use something sharp to poke some holes through where the dots are and then position the pattern on top of one of the pieces. Mark the dots by just marking through those holes and then mark where the handle placement is. Do the same to both pieces. Take a bow loop with the wrong side facing up and center it above a dot with the raw edge actually touching the dot and pin in place. Then do the same to the other three bow loops. Stitch a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge of each bow loop and do that on all four. Trim the seam allowance slightly on each bow loop. Fold the bow loop over to cover the raw seam and then stitch a quarter of an inch away from the top of the bow loop and a quarter of an inch away from the bottom edge of the bow loop. Do that to all four. Now place the exterior bag pieces with the right sides facing and sew the side seams with a 3 8 of an inch or 1 centimeter seam allowance. I'm just going to move my needle position over and use the edge of my foot as a guide. Measure and mark 5 8 of an inch or 1.5 centimetres away from the top and bottom edge of each seam. Then cut two pieces of rigoline that are the same size as in between those two marks. Straighten out the boning and then position the boning in between the two marks next to the stitching line in the seam allowance and sew straight through the boning onto the seam allowance. And do the same thing to the other side. Push the seam to one side so that the boning is on the outside of the seam. We're now going to top stitch a quarter of an inch away from the stitching line and we're going to sew from the top to the bottom on one seam and then from the bottom to the top on the other seam. We're going to sew from the right side and it is a little bit tricky but it is possible. Now it's time to attach the oval base. First of all, just find the center points of the base and you can do that just by folding it in half and marking with pins and folding in half the other way to find the centers on the edges. Then mark the center front and center back of the bag, the bottom edge of the bag, and you can do that just by folding in half and aligning the seams and marking those folds with pins. Now pin the base right sides together with the bag, aligning the centre front and centre back pins first of all and the side pins with the side seams. Continue pinning in between those four central pins and just placing the pins across ways and that's going to make it easy to sew. With the oval base, Facing down against the machine, sew in place with a one centimetre seam allowance. Mm -hmm. 
Now turn the bag through to the right side and then bring the seams together to mark the bag back at the top edge in the centre. Sew the loop in place with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now it's time to sew on the handles. Measure and mark half inch away from each end of each handle and then position the handles where we marked before, extending the half inch past the top raw edge of the bag and sewing in place with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now it's easier to sew the handles onto the bag if you have a free arm on your sewing machine. If not, it's still possible to do without. Sew the other handle on in the same way. So the wriggling boning makes the top edge of the bag a little bit wonky, but that will be corrected when we sew the lining in. So the next step is to make the lining. I've just gone ahead and made that up. It's got a little slip pocket in there. All the instructions are in the pattern for that. And the lining is just made up in the same way as the outer bag, sewing the side seams and sewing in the oval base. And you just have to make sure that you leave an opening on one side edge of the bag so that we can turn it through after we've stitched the lining and the bag together. So find the centers of the top edge of the bag at the center front and the center back on the lining. Do exactly the same thing to the exterior bag. Now with the exterior bag facing with the right side out and the lining with the right side facing in, slip the exterior bag inside the lining, making sure that the side that has the loop and the pocket, they're on the same side. And we're just going to align them at the top edge, aligning the side seams and the center pins and pinning together. Continue pinning in between the four major pins and then sew around the top edge of the bag sewing with the one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance and this time I'm sewing as if I'm sewing inside of a cylinder. just like that. Cut a length of boning as instructed in the pattern and we're now going to stitch the boning around the top edge of the bag on the seam allowance. So just position the boning next to the stitching line and stitch straight through the boning. Now turn the bag through to the right side through the opening and the lining. I love how the boning helps this bag to hold its shape. Now sew the opening in the lining together. You can either do this by hand or you can just bring together the folded edges of the seam and stitch nice and close to the edge. Mm -hmm. 
Now it's time to top stitch around the top edge of the bag. So roll that top seam so that the lining is going to the inside of the bag and use some of these little clips to hold everything in place. And then when you sew, use the free arm on your sewing machine again and just stitching a quarter of an inch away from the top edge of the bag. These bag clips are so good. They didn't have them when I first started writing my bag patterns and they really make a difference. So it's time to make a firm base for the bag. So to do this, take the two remaining oval pieces and put them right sides together, stitch all the way around the edge, leaving quite a large opening. Trim the seam allowance and then turn through and you can give that a press if you like. To make the firm base, I've just used a piece of template plastic. So this is plastic that is used to make templates for quilting and patchwork. But you can also use some plastic that is flexible enough that you can cut it with scissors, maybe something like a large ice cream container lid. And then all I did was just traced the broken line of the oval pattern piece and then cut that out with scissors. You'll need to cut that just a little bit smaller. Then all you have to do is just push that inside our oval piece, so just through that opening. You can either hand stitch the opening together or I've just tucked the seam allowance to the inside and top stitched it closed. Then it's just a matter of sitting that or pushing that inside the bag and what that does is it holds the seam of the bottom of the bag out and it gives a nice firm base for the bag, helps it to hold its shape. So now it's time to make the bow. The bow is made from a strip of fabric that is cut across the width of the fabric. And this isn't actually long enough. So what we need to do is have a little extension piece, which I've already cut. So take your strip for the bow and just fold it in half. And we're just going to cut on the fold to make two pieces. Let's grab my better scissors. Now sew the smaller piece or the bow extension piece in the middle of the two longer pieces. So press the seams open. Now fold the strip in half lengthwise with the right sides facing. I'd like to make a 45 degree angle at both ends of this strip. So to do that, I'm just going to fold my corner like that, just making that 45 degree angle. I'm not folding the strip in half and pressing it because if I do that, what will happen is the crease will be on the wrong side of our strip when we turn it through. 
but what will happen now is when I go to sew, I'm going to sew this little quarter inch seam allowance. I can start here and I'll just stitch a quarter inch away from that fold and then straight on to the raw edge of the strip. As I said, sewing quarter inch away from the edge. I'm going to do the 45 degree angle on both ends of the strip, but I'm going to leave a two inch opening in the middle so that I can turn the strip through. little opening in the back there and now I'll just snip away the excess from the ends and clip away the corner. Now turn the strip through to the right side and to do this I'm just using a chopstick and what I like to do is just tuck the end in. So I keep tucking until I've got enough space to be able to push the chopstick through and then I'll just keep wriggling that through. Some fabrics are easier than others. Some slide against themselves. Others take a little bit more work. I'll just keep pushing through until it comes out the center. And then do the same to the other side. A tip to pressing out that seam is to first of all position the strip with the seam side facing up. Flatten out that seam and then just using the tip of the iron, just run the iron along the seam and then flatten it out so that the seam is now on the side edge and just continue pressing and rolling that seam out. So come back and hand stitch that little opening together. I'll actually come back and do that later. Now thread the strip through these loops and tie a bow. Now it's time to sew a button onto the front and I've been saving the perfect little button from my collection and all you have to do is just hand sew it onto the front and you're finished. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time, bye!